Life in the Victorian Asylum by Mark Stevens. The, the world of 19th century mental health care. So, yeah. <laughs> it's divided into two parts. So, part one, the Victorian Asylum Patient's Handbook. So, basically what to expect if you were um, somebody um, that was now a patient going into um, these buildings. Part two, the history of the Victorian Asylum. So, it's pretty much self-explanatory. And then like you get the chapters within them. So, like diagnosis staff, daily routine, and some other topics in the first part. And then in the second part, so, um, different um, looks on on it so um, and the second part chapters aren't that long it's um, certain um, not not a lot a lot of pages um, so like I said it's it takes like you as the reader as like the pen, um, patient from entering um, to like how they're diagnosing you and um, you ultimately stay in there for, for however long depending on what they would have like diagnosed you with. So um, like how they started, um, the Lunacy Act, um, buildings, um, like rooms, processions, um, doing like an interview and observing the patient or would-be patient, um, going through um, like the um, illnesses like mania, dementia, and um, some other diagnosis. So Some patients able to be doing like work or like fresh air, um, recreation, medications, um, staffing. So you um, you get st stuff like that. Um, you get information about like different persons, um, dates, um, moving from the Victorian era to the Edwardian <laughs> um, age. Um, you get some images throughout it uh, and overall it is an interesting it is interesting for those who do have an interest in like the Victorian age um, health care me mental health care um, history and how um, it was dealt with at that time um so like at the beginning you get like this little like letter thing saying like dear patient um welcome to the victorian asylum we trust um that your stay with us will be an improving one we are gonna we recognize that going into hospital can be a troubling experience both for you and for your friends or family and then it goes on so, and then you go like the aims of the asylum. So, like aiding the recovery of the curable, helping them to live free both from mental illness and from treatment for it, um, to create the best circumstance possible to help patients achieve recovery. And so like, it goes from like patients that can need that treatment and leave to those who like ultimately are staying in those asylums. Um, so like a true picture of the asylum, look around you, you will see a, um, attractive light and spacious rooms rather different to the basic dark and cramped accommodation in the workhouse that other notable Victorian in institution, 
Uh, the buildings are here are pleasant in the asylum. The patient is surrounded by the latest designs in the 19th century architecture. Um, lunacy and lunatics in the Victorian in Victorian England. Um, so again, like how the asylums came to be, framework. So yeah, it just gives you different like looks on what um, a, a patient could expect to um, see. Um, between 1870 and 1900, Mulsford was a very typical Victorian asylum because it was rather small and unglamorous, though it never attracted at the finest medical minds, nor was it ever um, to great clinical or management innovations. On the ha other hand, there were no real scandals uncovered by the commissioners of lunacy, and no significant criticisms of the asylum's practice. Mulford simply got on with its job. Um, so, like, Stuff like that. Um, archives. But yeah, you do get um, some images as well. But yeah, um, but if that's of any interest to you, Life in the Victorian Asylum could be a great reference resource. Happy readings.